Hi guys, this is Sadek from Godwin.com. In this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest UN1CA ROM and our 16 base One UI 8 onto Galaxy A52 S 5G. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started with the flashing process. These are all the new features of the ROM. We'll have a look at all of them one by one, but first let's flash them. So take a backup and then get the ROM file from here or either of the, these two links. Once you have got the ROM file, which is this one, let's move to the next step and start off with the flashing process. So let's first install the RP recovery onto our phone. For that, the steps are quite simple. So you have to first enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. Go to settings. From there, go to about phone, software information, tap on build number seven time, which is over here. Then go back again, go back. Go to dev options and enable OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. Then tap on OK. You might get one more prompt, tap on allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let's first verify that. So open this article and get the Android SDK from this link. All the steps are given here, but I'll show you once again. So the video as well. So get the Android SDK from my article, extract them onto PC, and then you will get the following files as you could see. So type in CMD over here and hit enter. After that, type in the command ADB devices and verify you're having an ID. So you could see we're having this ID. If that's all well and good, now you have to unlock the phone. For unlocking the phone, you have to first boot the phone to download mode. And from download mode, long press the volume up key to go to device unlock mode. And then once again, press the volume up key to unlock the phone. I have made a video on this as well. If you want, you may have a look at this article steps and the video. So once you're inside the device unlock mode, just once again, press the volume up key to unlock the phone. After that, boot the phone to the OS. When that happens, you'll have to also verify that the OEM unlocking is shown here. In my case, I've just unlocked the phone, but OEM unlocking is not shown in, as you could see. So we have not yet bypassed the wall keeper. Let's bypass it. For that, you have to simply connect to Wi-Fi. And let's just do that. It is of paramount importance that you have to connect to Wi-Fi and only then you'll be able to bypass the wall keeper on your phone. So once the, that is done, Wait for around four to five seconds. Then once again, go to settings, dev options and verify the OEM locking is shown here and gray out. Okay, it's not done. So we have bypassed the vault keeper. Just that, that's all well and good. Now we could flash the recovery file onto our phone. So for that, you need a couple of files, which is the Odin tool. So get it from this link, extract them onto your PC, and then you will get the following files in the Odin tool, flash tools, Odin. These are the four files. One that is done, now boot the phone to the download mode. For that, either use a command which is adb, reboot, download and hit the enter key. Or you may simply use the hardware key combination as well. For hardware key combination, power of the phone, then press and hold the volume up and down key, then insert the USB cable. The phone will be in the download mode, but that's a lengthy approach, so simply use adb command. Once that is complete, you will now flash the recovery file onto your phone. For flashing the recovery file, get the file from my article and flash them onto your PC, onto your phone. So from the Odin tool, launch the via the exe file. Click on OK and the prompt that appears. Now, first of all, go to verify that it's shown in the log as added in the comments section as well. If that's good, go to option, uncheck auto reboot. Then click on AP and load the recovery tar file. Just give me a second. Recovery tar file for our phone should be somewhat here only. TWRP recovery, the naming is okay. Let's see in downloads folder. This is the pre meta patch file, not okay. This is the recovery file for our phone. Click select it, click on open. Likewise, go to the data slot and load the file of VP meta patch. VP meta patch file for our phone is also somewhat lying in this folder. VP meta patch, this is for our phone. Choose it, click on open, and we have got now both the files. Just click on start. Flashing will now start, take only a few seconds, four to five seconds. Then you will get the pass message. When that is done, now Press and hold the volume down and the power keys and keep on holding both the key for four to eight seconds. Once that is done, let go of the keys and now press and hold the volume up and power keys. So first off, press and hold the volume down and power keys and hold both the key for seven to eight seconds till the phone is about to undergo a restart. When that happens, let go of the keys and then press and hold the volume up and power keys as you can see from my video. And now keep on holding both the key for seven to eight more seconds till the phone at least powers on which should ha happen anytime soon. So once that happens, you may then let go of the volume up and power key as well. And now the phone should be inside the recovery mode. If you have pressed the key at the right time, the phone should be in the upper recovery or else it will be in the stock recovery or stock OS, in which case you have to flash the file once again. 
So just give it a few more seconds and we'll verify if we are inside the custom recovery or the sock recovery. Just wait for that to complete and then we will get the job done. And we are now inside the recovery mode. So first off, please do a format data. It's a must. So go to wipe format data type in yes, hit the blue check mark. Formatting should now be complete and it's now done. We could not transfer the file onto our phone and flash it. So for the ROM file, the link I've given already. Get the ROM file, copy it and paste the file onto your phone. If the phone is not shown here, let's do a reboot to recovery. And now wait for a few seconds. The phone will remount the data slot. After that, I suppose the phone should be shown here. If it's not shown here, even then, again, it's not a cause of any concern. I'll show you one more way of doing a file transfer. But first, let's just see if this works or not. The reboot to the recovery mode will get the job done or not. Chances are 50-50 still. Let's see what happens now. This will take some time as you could see, but please wait for that to complete. And okay, now my phone is shown here after reboot to recovery is shown. Great. Now let's, okay, my phone access is not there even now. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's copy the file from here, paste the file inside the folder of platform tools, which is over here. Do a renaming of the file. Let's rename it to ROM. The name becomes ROM.zip. One that is done. Let's now open the CMD window. Type in the command of ADB push file name rom.zip for the partition. Let's choose the data slot and not the SD card to be on safer side and hit enter. The file transfer will now start and take up to a, a couple of minutes at the very max. So either use the ADB push command, the normal file copy paste, which is not working for my case, or you may use the USB OTG if you have. But for now, please don't use the ADB side load. That might not work. So please skip that. And with this, the file is now there onto our phone. So go to install up a level, choose the data slot, okay, which is over here, choose the ROM file, swipe to flash, the flashing will now start and take up to around 4 to 5 minutes, so let's just wait for that to complete, so guys, the flashing will now complete, as you could see over here, successful, so now go back and once again do a phone formatting, it's a must, hit the blue check mark and one that is to complete, you may now tap on reboot system and the first booting up will take up some time, around 30 to 40 seconds which is not a cause of any concern. Let's at least see the boot local, the boot animation, which should now appear in time soon. And we have got the boot animation, which took ages. Still nothing to worry about. And the phone should now be inside the OS. And that is it. We are in the welcome screen. Let's get started with the setup process, which should not take much so adding sim to network and uh, okay let's agree to all for now hit the agree button once again set up manually skip for now i'm not using the wi-fi if you want you may connect to wi-fi link your account and restore all the app data as well but that is going to take a lot of time so for now i'm skipping all of that stuff show buttons on the screen okay let's use the swipe gestures dark theme let's use that next agree and that is it we are all set up home the one ui8 ui is over here just give it a few more seconds for the first time booting up this is the app drawer you have the those pre-installed samsung apps and apart from that this is the qs tiles swipe down from the top right for the qs and the left for the notification so as of now these are all the qs tiles as you could see from here only the qs tiles will show up for the notification swipe from the left you may change the setting if required but for now it's fine for me then let's access the settings menu connected devices galaxy ai so you will get all the ai tweaks the call assist writing assist interpreter note assist transcript assist browsing assist well there are a lot of ai features photo assist drawing assist audio eraser now brief is the one which i use and you also require Wi-Fi, which is quite obvious for them to work. In the display section, dark theme, outdoor mode, eye comfort, screen mode, vivid, natural, only two are there. Edge panel, navigation bar, swipe. Okay, circle to search is there as well. Again, that will only work if you have Wi-Fi. But you could see the feature is working as expected. It's just that you require the Wi-Fi, which I'm not going to connect for now. Then apart from that, accidental touch corrections, Show charging information, screensaver is optional, battery tweaks are here, power saving, battery usage limits can be seen from here, show battery percentage, what happens style is the section you might be looking at, so these are the 
default setup, change the wallpapers and let's see. Okay, there are various fe features wallpaper in this section. These five are there. You may also make the wallpaper by AI. These are the graphical wallpapers present here. Then we have the colors, basic colors one as well. Wallpaper service, dynamic lock screen. This will change the wallpaper after every whenever you unlock the phone and lock it. So on each time a new wallpaper will be shown on the lock screen. You have to download all these wallpapers once using Wi-Fi and only then this will work, which is quite an obvious way of working. Choose a color palette, which is the, the choose the theming engine. You could see the chain theme has changed depending on the wallpaper's major color. The theme will change accordingly. As you might be seeing in the color currently, these are being changed. You may also choose from these colors if required, but for now, let's choose a wallpaper color, something bright. This is way too much bright, but there's something different. Also, apply palettes to app icons. Let's now see how it looks. It's somewhat unique green color, but for now, it's fine. Well, it's taking somewhat longer, but it's done, I suppose. Even the wallpapers have been changed, though I do not like the black colors. If something can be done for that, or else let's keep the wallpaper in the, the app icons in the original state only. Let's not change that. Okay, let's enable this, but do not apply to the app icons because that has been removed. This is much better now. Then after that, in the themes, you may change the... Okay, you also have to sign into your account for the themes, but for now, this is the default theme. You may get more themes, wallpapers, and icons from the Galaxy theme store. AODs are also there from the same theme store. Then accounts and backup, advanced features. Bixby, oh, who uses Bixby now? I don't know. Labs, multi window for all the apps. That's great. Backswipe preview. You will not be able to see the preview of the recent or previous screen, which is a handy feature. Then multi window, we have side button. You may add a function to the side button, double press to open camera. Or, okay, we can even open an app. That's what I was looking at. Just assign the app of your choice, double press to open that. Well, I just used the apps and now let me see. The files app is open, so it's working well and good. No issue with that. You may also add something for the long press. Let's keep the long press for the power menu. And let's see if it's yes, it's working well and good. Then apart from that, the multi window we have seen just now. Swipe for split screen, swipe for pop-up view, full screen. View. So multi window is a great feature, uh, quite a handy one. Let's long drag here to open the multi windows. This is the pop up view, which can be used. You could drag the screen over here and use it. For now, you could also change the size length. You could see as from here. Okay, let's keep it closed for now. Well, I am not that much expert. It seems okay. Now it's gone. So we have where we we were in the lab section. So let's go there once again. Advanced features over here. Okay, side button, multi window, scene, motion, and gestures. Lift to wake is fine. Double tap to turn on screen. To turn off as well. Double tap to wake is working. Tap to turn off is also working. Great. Then, apart from that, palm swipe to capture. Swipe the edges of your hand across the screen. Take a screenshot. Well. I don't know something I am doing wrong or the feature is not working currently. I have to verify it once. Apart from that, all the other tweaks are working. But for this, I have to do some practice, I suppose. Because as of now, you could see it's currently not working as expected. Not a major issue for me. Then uh, where will we in the UN1CS settings? ROM version is their device name. UI tweaks are here as well. Enable blur effect, launch animation type. Mass, low end, let's say high end. Well, why it's lagging? I don't know. Okay, it was just for the one time delay. You can change the launch and mission types from here. Force peak refresh rate 120 hertz at all time. But this will lead to more battery drainage. But it's fine for me. Spoofing settings are there as well. Plenty fix is already there. So you have the PIF files. You just have to import the key box file. And for that update the integrity fix, you will have to go online, then update the PIF, please. It's very important. So you could see currently it's of one month, currently one month old. Old, so that might not work. You can also hide the dev setter from various apps. Spoof the hardware at a station and then import, import the KBox XML file. 
I have a keybox file, but first let me verify if it's working or not. So please give me a second. This the keybox file which I'm currently using is this one. So it's on my phone currently, and you could see it is currently working. Yes, it's working. So let's try to use this file onto this phone. And then we'll verify for verification that it will take ages because you have to log in to the Google account and then add my account, enable 2 f oh, bypass the 2FA as well, and only then it will work. Then install the plain integrity API checker app for it to check. So that will take ages. For the sake of reference, I'm just showing you how to use it. So take the keybox file and transfer the file onto your phone. Okay, obviously change it to file transfer from here. Auto trans transferring files. Okay, let's do that. And now it should be shown here. Paste the file. For the sake of convenience and to be on safer side, let's rename it to keybox only. Remove the numbers from the end. And now first of connect to Wi-Fi. And after that, update PIF from here. Then load the keybox and enable spoof hardware session. Then import the keybox file. Tap on done. And now you'll be able to pass the strong test without any issue whatsoever. Apart from that, you may also hide the dev setup from various banking and payment apps. Great extra settings. Allow app downgrade, which is a must. Disable, allow secure screenshot in the banking as you can take a screenshot now without any issue whatsoever. Disable screen capture detection. Okay, fine. Unlock higher FPS in games. So all the important required tweaks are in this ROM. That's great to see. No issue whatsoever. You may solve the updates from this section or you may simply flash it by the recovery mode. In that case, please do not do a factory reset. That's not required unless asked by the developer. That is not required for every OT updates. So guys, that's it. Okay, let's see the wallpaper from here. Themes, we have seen widgets, settings. What all is there in settings? You may change the home grid size, app grid size, folder grid from this section. Add icons to the home screen, lock home screen layout, add new icons to the landscape mode. I have seen some animations. In the theme section, you may get the theme from the store only. This we have seen already. And that is just about it, I suppose. So guys, if you have any query with regard to any of the steps, let me know in the comment section. And thank you for watching the video.